Hello, um, today I will be uh, giving a lecture about Ida B. Wilds and um, during that time of her being a public speaker, an activist, and becoming uh, a journalist at the time. Uh, my first point that I'm going to discuss is the significance of the murders of her three friends um, in Memphis, Tennessee, which were entrepreneurs. Uh, in my personal opinion, I feel that they were lynched uh, because uh, not only were they black entrepreneurs, but this was a time um, after the reconstruction ended um, where blacks uh, f used to flee to different towns. And obviously Memphis uh, became one of the towns where blacks began to thrive and have their own businesses and just be a part of their own communities. Uh, I don't think the simple fact that they were lynched because of them having just their own businesses, but because they were afraid of, quote unquote, uh, through the reading, Negro domination. Negro domination as far as the businesses doing better in sales, doing better as far as uh, gaining more customers than these white businesses in this town. The second point um, I'm going to make uh, is about basically uh, the, the black owned press and Ida B. Wells using them as a platform for her excerpts and uh, pamphlets on informing others about lynching and about the injustices of it and getting the justice for it. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to uh, mention the five uh, black owned uh, press, press releases uh, companies um, by the name of Evening Star, The Living Way, which she wrote under the alias Lola, uh, the New York Age and the Indianapolis Freeman and also the Chicago Conservator. These were uh, black presses that uh, released many of her excerpts. She wrote for them, she edited for them. So she basically used the black press for um, many reasons besides being informative. She wanted it to teach blacks how to read and how to read other newspaper articles as far as a reference to what she's talking about as far as examples um and also you know for current events uh because at that time the end of uh the reconstruction and at the end of civil war many blacks were illiterate so this is at a time period where everyone is trying to uh build themselves back up uh, through throughout the Jim Crow laws at this time. My third point uh, is going to be about um, Frederick Douglass and his opinion on uh, Ida. Uh, I feel that he feels that she is very courageous being that she's the only one that has these thoughts and are very courageous to speak her mind about these injustices of lynching. Booker T. Washington, I, you know, from the video, he was somewhat what people feel like Obama is to our people. He's for black excellence and helping the black community. But at the same time, speaking against it, I personally don't think Obama's that way, but I'm just using the comparison because I know many uh, blacks out there or just people in general that feel that Obama hurts black people. So um, at that time, Booker T. Washington, he basically was kind of like catering to uh, the oppressors uh, prior to really just speaking his mind as far as, you know, being uh, a little militant, uh, but not too much, not as much as uh, Ida Ida was just um, you know, being honest about the 
the, these brutal killings, you know, of lynching. Um, and my last point that um, I'm going to kind of combine is uh, why were black pastors from the South against Ida? They were against her because the black pastors were used to kind of keep the Negroes contained for the oppressors uh, through Christianity, uh, through the tithing, when really the tithing would be given to the oppressors to keep the Negroes under control. Um, and that's just what sums up what the South uh, was about during the Jim Crow laws, was to keep everyone segregated, to keep the Negroes quiet uh, so that the the whites could economically thrive more and the blacks suffer uh, through, you know, the beginning of what we call now capitalism. Um, piggybacking off of uh, my previous point as far as Ida B. Wiles um, being a activist. So I think that she went to Europe for support because um, in Europe, they weren't too big on racism as we were in the United States. So um, these two women by the name of, um, I believe, Catherine uh, Empe, I believe that's how you say it, and uh, Isabel Mayo, they wanted her to promote the anti-lynching campaign. And uh, with that, she began to receive uh, a lot of press for it through uh, British um press companies and papers and um not only that she uh with her coming back to the united states from her first um tour um in scotland actually her lect after her lecture in scotland um the scotland uh i mean i'm sorry the society of the recognition of brotherhood of man was established so this basically says that as far as today also that, you know, globally, this is an issue as well, but not as much as it was in the United States back in, you know, the 1800s, because, you know, the United States, uh, you know, the lynchings were out of control. So globally, they felt that this was an injustice as well. So, um, you know, sometimes, you know, as they say, you have to go you know, for outside help in order to, you know, get internal help or, you know, to get your voice heard. Um, thank you so much for listening to my lecture. Um, I have learned plenty and I feel that, you know, just history repeats itself as far as, you know, what Ida Wells tried to accomplish. And, you know, um, we have a lot of work to do, but we've come a long way. And not only that, but, you know, I feel like all of us have become activists in a way, um, not only for just blacks, but just for what's right. Um, and yeah, thank you.